Alrighty then, so we're back in another video made by, of course, Jurassic Fight Club. So today we have two com combatants. We have the American Lion and the Arctodus, aka Short Face Bear. Anyways, let's start with the American Lion first. Panthera attracts the North American Lion at the Pleistocene era, weighing around 775 pounds, which is good. If you're talking about the largest specimen of the American lion, an average male had a mass of around 256 kilograms, aka 564 pounds, stood 4 feet tall and measured 8.2 feet long, which is also an upper estimate. It was about 25% larger than a modern African lion. If you're talking about in length, yes, but uh, scientifically, uh, mass, mass determines the size of an animal, and the American lion is definitely more than 25% bigger than the modern lion. Of course, that's the upper estimate of the American lion. If it is an average one, then, uh, honestly... Okay, let me do some math here. An average American lion is around... 564 pounds, you know, males. Then there's a regular lion in which, if it's a male, uh, there is an average of 411.3 to 496 pounds, at least if it's in Southern Africa, where it's larger. In East Africa, it's 386 pounds. In India, it's 350 to 420 pounds, which means that 25% uh, larger, around 25% larger, seems to be a general statement. But, uh, in reality, it, it would be, it just varied. It was probably plain colored, not, spar not spotted, and not large manes common to modern male lions. Panthera had long legs, five retractable claws on each of its four feet, and powerful teeth and jaws, with a bite force of more than 1,800 pounds per square inch. The Mega Lion. The Mega Lion's long legs were nonetheless not designed for long-distance chase, and its strategy for stalking its prey was to use cover and camouflage to get close enough to attack successfully. Once it got close, the lion would run in and use its powerful jaws to subdue its prey. They would also rely on its speed and quick reflexes to outmaneuver larger opponents such as the giant bear, which, uh... Why would... Why would anything with... Why would any American lion with a brain want to deal with something as big as a short-faced bear, even though they were competitive, like... Even though they were competitive, I, I doubt that an American lion would want to deal with something as huge as something like a short-faced bear. Evidence shows that Panthera was, like Archer the Giant Bear, an apex predator at the top of the food chain in its habitat. Males probably fought with Arctodus for food and for ultimate dominance to range. In the harsh, rapidly changing climate of the late Pleistocene era. Did they also just forget about Smilodon and Dire Wolf? I would imagine that even if they were competitive, they remained rather peaceful towards each other. However, uh, they have to fight if necessary, but even then, they, they wouldn't even fight. <laughs> Come on, why would, why would American Lion want to deal with a short-faced bear? Though paleontologists have recovered several well-preserved specimens of Panthera from the tar pets at Rancho La Bria in Los Angeles, they were far less abundant than those of Smilodon Fatalis, the saber-toothed lion, no, the saber-toothed cat. This relative shortage suggests that Panthera was probably more intelligent and involved and able to avoid the tar traps to the lives of so many Ice Age animals. The top speed of Mega Lion. <laughs> Come on! It's about 45 to 50 miles per hour, as fast as a modern-day cougar. They probably ran at around 30 miles per hour, which is slower than the cougar. Oh, anyway, uh, let's move on to the Archidus, aka Short Face Bear, and also I forgot to mention that the American Lion uh, looks not really accurate. Anyway, based on the skeletons that have been found, Archidus stood 12 feet tall on its hind legs and weighed as much as 2,500 pounds. Twice as large as the largest bear is living today. 12 feet is just too tall. Arctodus simus stood 2.5 to 3 meters, aka 8 to 10 feet tall, standing up on its hind legs. And, um, in, actually, average mass of, um, Arctodus simus was 
around 1,378 pounds. The maximum recorded at 2,110. And uh, hypothetically, the largest individuals may have approached 2,200 or even 2,600. But um, it's just an overestimate. Besides its enormous size, Arctodus has several features that sets apart from modern bears, including oversized teeth and a short muzzle relative to his wide skull, a fat that earned its nickname, the short-faced bear or bulldog bear. It also had unusually long front legs. In fact, its front and back legs were equal in length as opposed to shorter front legs seen in modern bears. Let me see. Okay, so the longer legs... Well, uh, why didn't JFC give it longer legs? I, I don't... I don't understand. This adaptation might have allowed Arctodus to reach speeds of more than 45 miles per hour and travel much greater distances than modern day bears, which only run for a short distance around 35 miles per hour. In fact, the Arctodus is at a top speed of 30 to 40 miles per hour, just a little faster than an average bear. One of the giant bear's lethal weapons as a predator was his massive paws. Equipped with long, sharp claws and powered by a strong upper body. His teeth also had the strength to crush bone with a force that could reach more than 2,000 pounds per square inch. Arctodus was well adapted for close combat situations and can intimidate with his sheer size and use his power to throw down and crush its enemies. Most scientists believe Arctodus was an apex predator in its habitat because it run down and overpowered its prey, mainly bison. Perhaps also larger animals as woolly mammoths, which is just completely ridiculous. <laughs> Others have argued that despite having the size necessary to be a mega predator, Arctodus tool light bone to be able to bring down such huge prey. Some of them think instead a giant bear was a scavenger, relying mainly on the kills of other predators for survival. Actually, it was much more of an opportunistic omnivore. If Arthur's Sims wasn't largely herbivorous, the scavenging of mega herbivore carcasses and the occasional predatory kill would complement the large amounts of vegetation consumed when available. This thing is capable of hunting. Don't treat it like Jack Horner treats T-Rex. The giant bear Arctodus simus can be distinguished from another type of North American short-faced bear, Arctodus persistinus, by its superior size. This closest, the closest living relative to short-faced bear that exists today is Dramatus ornatus, most commonly known as the spectacled bear of South America. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin. The ice age has come to an end, and global warming has thrown the ecosystem of North America into utter chaos. Animals were forced to adapt, migrate, or die. Mass migration brought new diseases that indigenous creatures had no resistance to. One thing that really bothered me is in that hunt, like the the narrator says that the American lion uh, was cautious and quiet and all that, when in fact the American lion was roaring at the top of its lungs. This is going to alert the bison, like, it must have really, it must have been really lucky and caught a bison which was deaf or something. In order for it to actually be able to successfully hunt that bison while roaring at the top of its lungs. Actually, the bison could still see. The bison, it must have been both deaf and blind. <laughs> Sorry. With the food supply dwindling, even dominant predators could find themselves fighting for prey. Bison were one of the few herbivores that actually thrived. With this amount of force pressed into the American lion, you'd think that the American lion's neck would have just broken by now, but nah, not really. In the warmer temperatures, the grasslands expanded in the heat, offering them a larger food supply. The bear's attention is clearly on the bison. Its mind is no longer focused on the fight. Although the lion is down, he's certainly not out. The mega lion is most comfortable hunting at night. Like all cats, his large eyes gave him superior night vision. How did the bear not even notice that? How did the bear not even see that coming, man? It, it, what did, you know, the, the short-faced bear must have been deaf. Or something like the short face bear must have been deaf in order for it to not just see the uh, lion coming for it. That does not help him now. How did he even toss something as big as like 2100 pounds <laughs> into the ground and just effortlessly? Man.
The only hope the lion has is to crush the windpipe of the bear. If it can bite with enough force to penetrate that thick hide of the bear, they'll succeed in winning the day. The lion's long tail gives him... At this point, I'm not really watching a real fight. I'm watching more like a WWE wrestling match. Like, the fight here is just so human-like and not animalistic at all. Like... <laughs> How do how does animalistic fights work? I guess the uh, it it shouldn't be as awesome, bro, as something like this monstrosity. Agility. Before the lion can reach the bear's throat, the bear is able to hold off the attacker with its arms. The lion tries in vain to grab the throat, but the bear is just too powerful. The ice age favored power over speed. Larger animals were better insulated. With the bear showing its capabilities, the American lion should just run away at this point. Like, it shouldn't have to risk its life anymore. Just find another just find another prey to catch. Come on, it's not that hard. Come on, just give the bear its win and take the L and just find another prey for you to kill. Man, this is just, this is the funniest sequence that I've ever seen in my life, and also just absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Come on, just get, uh, get out of there. Oh my good lord. What am I watching, what am I even watching right now? Why am I watching this monstrosity when I could just, when I could just watch quite getting exposed all day? ...is in excruciating pain from the force of the bear's throat. Yeah. Now it should just run away. It shouldn't just continue fighting. Like, why does Jurassic Fight Club treat every every carnivore as a bloodthirsty monster who loves fighting to the death, even though, like, even though like their opponent is clearly superior in terms of fundamentals? This this episode is tank Jurassic Fight Club more. Then how Netflix tanked. But he won't give up. It won't give up. Why? <laughs> Goodness gracious. Th this, this is even worse. Th this is probably the worst Jurassic Fight Club episode to ever grace the internet. Even worse than that of the bloodiest battle which was already terrible enough. Because of the lack of available food, his survival instincts won't allow him to turn tail and run, even though it seems like he's fighting a losing battle. Come on. Just make the American lion run, you idiot. Man, it's just, it's just so bad. He turns to face the bear and bellows a huge roar to send a clear message, this fight is to the death. Now they're... They're having the mentality of a human. God. Why, why don't they just end the fight now? Why are they just politely waiting for each other? To... Come on. The bear's roar would seem as loud as an oncoming train. Um, did that snap the bear's neck? Uh... I have no idea. Alliance scores a direct hit to the face of the bear. Temporarily blinded and disoriented, the bear loses its footing and crashes to the ground. This gives the lion the opening that it's been waiting for. The lion's senses are key. The lion could have just lunged at the bear straight away and the fight would be over. But no, the lion decided to politely wait for the bear to get up in order to fight again. Is, is this how Jurassic Fight Club works? Is this how fights work in general? And animals, like, in humans, it would make sense, like, WWE and stuff, and... Uh, yeah, but, uh, uh... This is not martial arts, this is not a wrestling match, this is just an animalistic fight, uh, where they don't act like humans. Even its whiskers, which could pick up vibrations. 
it can sense animals as small as a mouse in pitch darkness. The lion is desperate, and the only way it can win is to get to the throat. Lion could have also tried to go for the throat before the bear got up. With the last remaining strength, he lunges towards the bear. The force of the impact knocks the bear backwards, and the lion grabs the throat. The lion needed almost 40 pounds of meat a day to survive. On average, adult lions eat around 11 to 20 pounds of meat per day. American lion wouldn't need 40 pounds per day. Um, American lion would need around like 30 at max. Without it, the mega lion would quickly weaken. The bear is able to regain his footing and towers over its rider. It throws the 750 pound mega lion with little effort. Unfortunately for the lion, the bear happens to throw it in the direction of the cave. The cave is over 85 feet deep. A deadly drop. So they speculated that a fight, was a fight occurred and it's just, the American lion was thrown. In reality, that would be absolute crazy. A real, a real, a more realistic scenario would be that they just fell into the cave. Nothing happens. They just fell into the cave and then died. Nothing happened. It's a sheer drop to the bottom that nothing can survive. The herbivore bones that were found in the cave show no signs of predation. So this tells us that nothing that went into that cave lived to eat the bodies of the other victims. Yeah, that's it. Wasn't able to show the full one, but... Uh... Yeah, from this glimpse of it, it's just absolutely terrible. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know what's worse, this or Tomasaurus, the mightiest ever entirety of it. Uh, I I guess Tomasaurus, the Centosaurus being killed by a pack of Velociraptors is the absolute worst scene, but uh, this comes quite close. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.